Okay, it is time to tackle the issue of just how does time work in Star Trek. Based on what we have seen before, ma mainly starting with City on the Edge of Forever, where we first hear the theory that Spock says that time is fluid, like a river, with eddies and back currents. And how does that, how do we see that at work here? Well, and also, how does that jibe with the parallel timeline thing put out in parallels and also taken full advantage of by J.J. Abrams and others of his band of idiots? Basically, let's start with the beginning here. One, dispose yourself of the theory that our timeline and Star Trek's timeline ever crossed. They weren't. Star Trek has been called a period piece of a future that never happened. And then you also extend that to a past that never happened. For two ex notable examples, Clark Gable was not a matinee star in 1930. He was still a bit player. So it doesn't really work for Edith Keeler to be excited about going to see a Clark Gable movie when he didn't headline a movie until 1932. So, and also in the late 1960s, we did not have orbiting nuclear devices. We certainly didn't put one up uh, in response to a Soviet one. It never happened. And they never got that nuts. So yeah, there's two examples right there. And also examples of, this, of space travel being far more advanced in late 20th or the 21st century than we ever got to. Let's just take it that they took the, t the uh, path of continuing on beyond Apollo and going on to Mars by, by the 70s and 80s. And that would allow the development of the DY-100 and 500 and other shows, shit like that. And I'm being able to do a Earth-Saturn probe in the 1990s. So far, all we've done is send robots out that far. In fact, we haven't, we haven't gone beyond our own moon. That's rather pathetic as far as an interplanetary species go. But anyway. So we have the Star Trek timeline. Start here, go all the way down here. So how do the other timelines come in? Well, think of this as someone putting a great big rock in the middle of that timeline, disrupting the flow. Now, a lot of it, you know, the main timeline, you know, works its way around the disruption somehow, or just flows over it, and nothing really matters. But you have little streams that go off to the side. And this is where you get your mirror universe and your Kelvin timeline and the discovery timeline, as far as that matters. There may be other, dis you know, other disruptions along the line because it's basically how JJ, how JJ's timeline breaks off from the prime timeline, and that's something both me and uh, Foley over on Trek here point out. Prime timeline is not the same as canon timeline. Prime timeline, the, the, the term that was invented by JJ and his team to try and differentiate their thing, but it was never the you know, so, Prime Spock is still not our Spock. Our Spock could do time warp calculations in his head. Prime Spock, it never occurred to him to actually maybe go back and prevent all this crap and save Vulcan. Nope. He let it blow up, and afterwards he's like, no, I'm, I'm just let it happen. So that's not our Spock. Never was. I don't care if anyone played it. But they're, they're still, the timelines are still flowing in the same general direction. Now, with the canon timeline as our benchmark, this is why you have some of the same events happening in the different timelines. They hit those parts. And in the alternate timelines, they get a little more outlandish in trying to match up with those marks. Like with the Mirror Universe, you know, yeah, Kirk assumes command at about the same time, but instead of just rising to the ranks and taking over from Pike, he assumes command by assassinating Pike. And way over here in the JJ timeline, He's just made captain for no good reason. Then the fact that as, as a cadet, he was about to be bounced out on his ass. And also somewhere over here, you got Pike and a thing. And it just gets weird. You know, the, as these timelines are trying to realign themselves, as they get further down the line, they eventually start trying to remerge. And something that, you know, curious would happen when they start to realign. Like, let's take Picard. Particularly season three. Seasons one and two, no, they're, they're off to the side here. But season three, we're starting to see fewer and fewer differences. Things are lining up better. 
And we had to look at this from the perspective of, okay, yeah, other, other timelines, they're doing very stupid things to have certain events line up with the main timeline. Let's just assume, yeah, Picard, by this point, is in an android body. The technology's been there for, you know, essence and mind transfer since Turnabout Intruder. And... In the and also in the in the next generation episode, uh, Schizoid Man, you, you saw Ira Gray's transfer his essence into Data. The technology has been established for doing that. This is not a shocker. We can only assume that in the proper canon timeline, there was a much more logical reason for Picard's body to be transferred into an android body. And who knows why the why the android body still looks like a 95 year old guy waiting to die. But let's put that aside. In the in what we saw in season two, of, season one of Picard, it was stupid, but it had to line up. It's one of those fixed points in time they had to match up with. But by the time of season three, the timeline's starting to remerge. You're getting fewer for discrepancies. You get you know, and an objective aversion would notice that looking back, fewer and fewer discrepancies. Are, the, the timeline is starting to realign itself. So by season three, now it's not completely canon, not completely lined up yet, but it's damn close. The fact that you have a Constitution-class ship, the USS New Jersey, looks like it should as a Constitution-class ship, and not the Disco Prize that we have in Strange New World. That thing, that one's still way over here somewhere. Whether or not it ever lines up, who knows? Because some of these timelines, yeah, they never will line up, but they'll still do these crazy machinations that line up with. With the prime, with the with the canon history, so you can do that but you get to the point where it's like eventually the other time will just they'll peter off somewhere else and go, you know, or they'll will eventually line back up with the canon timeline and realign themselves somewhat, but very few disruptions. So, is season three of Picard canon? Mostly. There's still a couple of holdovers here and there from uh, from Discovery and from, from Picard Seasons 1 and 2. But it's starting to shed those as it realigns up back with the canon timeline. So we can say it's mostly canon. And if we go through with Star Trek Legacy, that would pretty much be the last hurdle where it's like, no, we're no longer referencing that crap. It's now back in line with proper canon. And we can move on with our lives. So, hopefully that's useful to everybody. We will, again, links in the description for helping to support this. We really do need help here, guys. I'm trying to get this channel back to something of viability. So, like, share, subscribe, and we will talk at you later.